Hi everybody, Mr. Farmer here and welcome to AP Macroeconomics. So macro deals with the big picture stuff. How is the entire economy doing? And there's a big focus on the government, how they uh, can impact everything. Um, and just kind of how everything works together. We'll talk about the aggregate of stuff. So typically the focus is, uh, there's four areas, the GDP and linking to economic growth, unemployment, inflation, international exchange rates and a big thing that pops up in kind of everything is interest rates for banking and so these are what we call economic indicators and you'll see as we go through the semester we're going to touch on all of these different topics so here's how it looks we have a circular flow a little bit more than we looked at beforehand so we still have our households and our firms and we have our factor markets and our uh, uh, product markets but then we have some other linkages here too and the reason why I want to show you this is for this reason. If the households decide to do something different, then that can, can impact the product market and the factor market like we talked about. But then we see more things. If they change their minds about something, then there's a flow to, this is going to be banks here. And then if there's a change to the banks, that can then somehow impact the firms. And the firms can then somehow invest and that becomes the markets for goods and then we have government here and the government will they can do uh, some public savings put in the financial markets if there's a public deficit so they might have to borrow some money they can spend some money they can tax um, and so the idea is that everybody impacts something so if one person does something like that household that could impact the firms in a way we haven't seen before through financial markets. If the government decides to do something, that can impact the financial markets, and therefore that can then impact how the firms react or how households react also. And then we have this overseas portion also. So again, it's kind of a domino effect. When one thing happens, we see effects other areas. Uh, and so first semester we had microeconomics and you need to know the perfect competition and that was it or the labor market and that was it uh, and you really just focused on that one graph the second semester it's more about cause and effect okay so just keep that in mind as we go through everything so we have a video if you guys want to watch it go ahead and click on that but today we are focusing on gross domestic product and there's two ways of figuring this out the expenditure approach which is what today is going to be about it's also referred to as the output approach it views gdp as the sum of all the money spent on buying items and again gdp is the value dollar value or whatever currency you're talking about so the dollar value of all goods or services produced in a given year these are final goods uh, not intermediate goods and so one way to figure this out is how much money was spent on these because if the money was spent then the thing must have been made so who spends money households spend money and so we have personal consumption expenditure or abbreviation c gross private domestic investments which is business investments and that's going to be i government purchases or government expenditures is g and then net exports is exports minus imports or x minus m for personal consumption, where do people spend their money? Um, durable goods, non-durable goods, and services. Those are the three areas. Because again, this is spending, not investing. Okay, if you invest in the stock market, that doesn't count. That's a transfer payment. There's no actual goods or services being conducted there. Whereas stepping aside for the service of the broker fee. Okay, but durable goods. Um, my definition is goods that last longer than two years and are reusable. And so when you talk about durable goods and we talk about the business cycle later on, durable and non-durable will come back into play as far as how they are impacted. Where else do households spend money? Non-durable goods. Goods that do not last more than two years or can be used only one time. I say one time just because a, a while ago somebody said, well, what about canned goods? That lasts longer than two years. Yeah, you eat that can of green beans one time though. And last section is service sector. Uh, that could be lawyers, that could be doctors, um, financial services, uh, banking, those kinds of things happen that way. 
um, delivery services. Uh, Amazon, for instance, is heavily into the service sector for that reason. So uh, entertainment, restaurants, whatever else, it's a big topic there for services. So this is where they spend their money. We're not going to spend too much time on households because, again, that was most of microeconomics was where do they spend their money. Just they do. Again, it's on final goods and services. And one thing to note is we're talking about domestic. If it's ever an international exchange, doesn't matter if that's a household, business, or government. If it's an international relationship, it's automatically international. Second place, gross private domestic investments, and I just usually say business investment, but this is the fancy term for it. First off, it is private, so we're not talking about the public sector or the government sector. It's private businesses spending by businesses, not a government agency, and again, the transactions are taking place inside the country, so it's domestic spending. This is all final purchases of machinery, equipment, tools by business enterprises. Now, again, Capital goods are not the same as intermediate goods. Intermediate goods means whatever you bought, that steel is going to be incorporated into the final product. That's the intermediate good, and that steel, whatever that value is, will be included in the final sale price of that good. Capital goods, like a machinery, uh, stays with the business. That's forklift is used by the business. Is it used in the process to produce the goods? Yes. Is it incorporated into the goods? No. So maybe that's a good distinction between capital and intermediate. There's usually some confusion there. All construction, including residential housing, uh, because you're spending money on that. Think of it as a service. Okay. And changes in inventories. Now, this is one where people can get a little confused. Inventory is unsold products. It was still produced. So if something was made in the year 2019, <clears throat> it was still, money had still been spent on it, land, labor, capital, all those factors of production were still used to produce it, even if it doesn't go unsold. And so money was still spent on that. Again, GDP is how much money was spent on a, in a given year on goods or services. Money was still spent, just not by households. So it can either de increase or decrease throughout the year, uh, for us, we're going to simplify the concept and say if it went unsold in the year 2019, but was producing in 2019, it will count towards gross private domestic investments under like the subcategory of inventories. In reality, this can actually uh, change numbers around. Let's say it gets sold in 2020. Well, then that would retroactively change 2019 because there's probably a markup price. So this is why GDP is a bit of an estimate. Um, this is one of the reasons at least, okay, it gets pretty close though, and it's what we use. So there's the thing called net private domestic investments. So GDPI gross domestic private investments, uh, is the net plus depreciation. Whenever you see gross versus net in macroeconomics, the difference is has depreciation been used, has been identified. Depreciation is also referred to consumption of fixed capital, and it is a 50-50 shot, so yes, you need to know both. So what is it? What is depreciation in economics? Here's a clip from Investopedia. Depreciation is an accounting method of allocating the cost of a tangible asset or its useful life and is used to account for declines in value. Businesses depreciate long-term assets for both tax and accounting purposes. For tax purposes, businesses can deduct the cost of the tangible assets they purchase as business expenses. However, businesses must depreciate these assets according to the IRS rules about how and when the company can take the deduction. So what is it? It's a way of paying less taxes that's okay by the IRS because it stretches big cost items over multiple years. Let me give you an example. So let's say you have a roof redone and that roof is going to cost you $15,000 to produce, to get refit and whatever else. And that's going to last 15 years. So here's the basic idea on a standard line. Okay. Uh, line item depreciation. There are different ways of doing this. Every year, that roof will depreciate by $1,000. Okay, 
So that $1,000 depreciation, meaning reduction of worth, counts as a cost to the business. Even though they didn't pay for it, they just said they can save that money and earmark it so that after 15 years, they've saved $15,000. And so they don't get just one lump. Hey, that was a crazy cost of a year because we had to rebuild our factory. We had to rebuild whatever else, our roof. No, it's been taken into account for the last 15 years. That we don't get heavy swings in the taxes or heavy swings in the cost of the business also. So that's the concept behind it. Okay. <clears throat> so again, this is something that's approved by the IRS. Uh, there are different ways of doing this. If it is an exponential in year one, it actually loses $5,000. And by year 15, it only loses 10 bucks. Or is it a lot straight line where it's every year is $1,000? Doesn't matter for us. We'll figure out the context. But that's the idea behind it. If you've ever had a reserve study done on your house or if you're, uh, for a business, that's the idea. Everything, light bulbs, last a certain amount of time. If they're incandescent, two or three years. If they're LED, 22 to 25 years. Uh, and so after, if you save up enough time over the 20 years for the LEDs, for instance, the amount of time you have to re replace them, you've saved up the money. Okay, that would be depreciation. So if you're going to look at a reserve study or you can look into it now, uh, that's the idea behind it. So why do we care? Why do we care about gross versus net? Well, if there's a growing gap between gross and net, that means people are not getting new things because the depreciation is getting larger and larger and larger, meaning people haven't updated their stuff. They're not getting new things. So by itself, it's not a major issue. But it can be a tell that maybe the economy is slowing down. Again, that there's too many factors to really see everything. And so that's one indicator. Again, we look at economic indicators. So there's a large gap between the gross and the net. Maybe depreciation is getting larger and larger. And if depreciation is getting larger and larger, what does that tell you? It tells you people are not getting new items. They're letting it fall into disrepair or simply repairing it more often versus getting a brand new concept or brand new good or service. So again, it's, it's an indicator. And that's what we look at. Okay. <clears throat> So we had households, we had businesses, so now we're up to government, government purchases, uh, government consumption, expenditures, and gross investments, uh, expenditures for goods and services that government consumes and providing public services. The government still does services. They still buy final goods. Um, they pay for the road repair for the construction. Uh, they pay for the firefighter engine, okay, and everything in between does not include transfer payments to them transferring uh, for Social Security. That doesn't count, even though that's an expense for them. That's a transfer payment. No good or services was uh, bought with that Social Security. Um, unemployment or veterans benefits don't count. So this is on goods and services. Not much more to say about that. It's a pretty straightforward one, actually. So last one is net export. So again, a lot of times it's X minus M. Sometimes you do see XN for net exports, and that's just the uh, URI do this. So in the United States, we uh, export a lot of material. We also import a lot of material. Actually, we usually import more than we export, so we should have a negative on the net export side. A lot more about this later on, um, but for right now, it's the dollar value, or again, whatever currency you're talking about, the exports, and you subtract out the imports. Yes, there is, just like a lot of macroeconomics, a big discussion on should you actually subtract out imports because that actually is better for the economy, the whole specialization thing compared to the advantage, all that kind of stuff. But the basic equation that we use is exports minus imports. Later on, we'll talk about trade balances uh, and current account deficits. Um, for us, we're going to keep it simple and trade balances and current account balances, uh, current account deficits uh, are going to be exports minus imports. So if you have a negative, that means your imports are larger than your exports. If you have a positive trade balance, that means your exports by dollar value are larger than your imports. So calculate GDP. 
C plus I plus G plus exports minus imports. So if your personal consumption is $5,000, gross private and domestic investment is $7,500, government purchases, net exports, blah, 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 then the, you would have a GDP of $21,000. So in case you miss any of that equation, and it's a simple equation, and yet it's a very large equation. You can actually see most of the semester in here. How do businesses react? How do uh, invest businesses uh, and households react to each other? And they're going to kind of pause and go, how's the government do everything there? And then we're going to look at, how about the bank and the financial sector? How does the financial sector impact households and businesses? How can the financial sector impact the government? And it's going to kind of come back over all these different things. And once you know how the domestic section works, then we're going to end up with the international to, to round things off. So the fun thing I like to uh, bring up is um, the real GDP, which is GDP adjusted for inflation, a later conversation, is personal consumption, expenditures, households, gross private domestic investment, I, exports, imports, government consumption. Now, this is a table from .gov, okay? Bureau of Labor Statistics is bls.gov. The equation I showed you guys is the equation. Yes, it goes more specific, federal defense, non-defense, state, local, and believe me, there's definitely longer, longer tables than just this little slip, but that's the idea, and that's what I think is interesting about this course is the things we're teaching, the things you're learning are the legitimate concepts. Okay, and then you can definitely dive deeper if you would like to, but that's the idea. So for instance, household consumption, here we have durable goods, non-durable goods, service sector. That's what we were just talking about. And again, you can get more, uh, how about rent, natural gas, where do they spend money? You can get more into that. Business expenditure. Fixed non-residential investments, so equipment, computers, intellectual property, fixed residential, single, multifamily. So again, it gets broken down more, change in business inventories, okay, like we talked about. Government expenditure. <clears throat> this one does include transfer payments, um, but they will be deducted elsewhere. Okay, so federal government receipts and expenditures. Um, and so they, they would uh, adjust for that. Uh, things like interest payments, everything else. Um, but consumption expenditures, that's what we're looking at. These are the things that are just keeping track of where they spend money. So this isn't exclusive to the GDP here. Uh, and then receipts and expenditures continued. Okay, uh, receipts, expenditures, everything else. So that was it. Okay, hopefully that helped clarify some things. So again, what we talked about today is kind of overall, what is macroeconomics, the big picture stuff? Okay, what concepts will be focused on, the economic indicators, and we start with what is GDP? Um, and then also we looked at how to calculate GDP with the expenditure or output approach. Later, uh, we're also going to look at the income approach, uh, which is just a different way of checking on that GDP. Till next time.